Good evening, Jade McMillan with ABC News. The state government has announced more than a billion dollars worth of savings measures as it revealed this year's budget deficit is expected to hit a record $3.1 billion. The Premier has again blamed iron ore prices and GST share, but the opposition says it's time he took responsibility for WA's worsening set of figures. The Premier Colin Barnett has been preparing the public for weeks for what he predicted would be a horrible mid-year review. The reason for the large deficit, he says, is clear. The downturn in commodity prices, particularly iron ore, has had a major negative effect on our financial position. Similarly, a further worsening in the GST share of revenue coming to Western Australia has added to that problem. The deficit this financial year has been revised up from the May budget and is now expected to hit $3.1 billion, followed by another similar deficit the year after, a smaller deficit in 2017-18 and a pushed back return to surplus in 2018-19. Again, largely because of the decline in revenue of all sorts. We knew we were facing strong headwinds. Uh, when we brought the 15-16 budget down, but the headwinds are coming stronger and from all directions. State debt has been slightly revised down to $29.6 billion this year, but is now forecast to hit $39 billion over the forward estimates. Not acceptable. We'll have to do more about that. The Premier maintains the government is managing the financial position well, arguing it's beyond their control. These guys are a financial menace. It's the equivalent of Mr Nahan and Mr Barnett driving along in their car at 200 kilometres an hour, roaring through Perth and regional WA, smashing it into a tree and saying, it's not our fault. To combat the economic woes, the government has announced $1.3 billion worth of further budget measures. It's ordered an immediate six-month hiring freeze across the public sector, with only teachers and police exempted. There will also be further agency expenditure reviews, and it hopes to save almost $160 million by deferring or reducing the scope of some capital works projects. Year after year we see so-called savings measures that are never met. Year after year we see expense targets that are never met. The Treasurer has flagged the potential of further asset sales but refused to give any details on what that could include. Jessica Strutt, ABC News. The public sector hiring freeze has drawn the ire of unions who warn it will affect frontline services. Business, on the other hand, is urging the government to go further. And then I'm going to put up another While teachers and police may be exempt, unions are furious that other workers will bear the brunt of a government plan to save a billion dollars. We will see more West Australians on trolleys in ED, more people in beds in, in rooms where they shouldn't be. We've got a real problem, we've got a real crisis in our hospitals. The government is not planning to fix that. This is a government that's failing, looking for a scapegoat and they've chosen the public service again. There will also be cuts to Western Power's infrastructure program, but the Chamber of Commerce says the government must do more. The government has to focus on reining in its expenditure, it has to focus on public service reform and it needs to focus on expanding its asset sales program. The Treasurer also issued a clear threat to the public sector and unions, confirming that if the government cannot contain wage increases to the inflation rate, there will be involuntary redundancies. Well, what we've seen from this government is that they're trying to uh, squeeze blood out of a stone. The opposition contrasted the state of the economy with the Premier's intention to stay on until close to the 2021 election. Seriously, have a look at today's finances. The Premier should be leaving. He should be ashamed of what he's presided over in Western Australia, rather than talking about the fact he wants another term in office. Re-elections for a third term are always difficult, I recognise that. But I think the people of Western Australia understand the circumstance the state is in. They understand that iron ore prices have effectively collapsed. The government denies it wasted the boom years and says it's on the right path well, to recovery. Nick Perpich, ABC News. We'll get through, and reporter Jessica Str